Okay, here we have another installment in the roller coaster ride that's the MK series. Now they started off with a bang in the 90s, fizzled out a bit, but then they came back hitting hard with MK9. Well, here's what I think of MKX. You interfere with Outworld Matters. The penalty is death. Mortal Kombat has without a doubt come a long way. I've been with this franchise since its inception in 1993, and while it's had its fair share of disappointing installments, I can't argue that this is and has always been a force to be reckoned with. This installment brings back a lot from past titles and some new elements as well. Let's get to it. The story of Mortal Kombat X follows the exploits and adventures of the usual suspects, along with some fresh blood including the young combatants, which are mostly the kids of the series regulars. We have Cassie Cage, Jackie Briggs and a few more. Now, since I'm already on the story, I'll give you my take on it. The story of Mortal Kombat X seems disjointed to say the least. In introducing these young warriors, Netherrealm seemed to have placed way too much emphasis on them while sacrificing a lot of important details regarding the others. While going through the campaign, you'll notice things like Scorpion is no longer a bad guy. He's actually friends with Sub-Zero now, and Sonya Blade and Johnny Cage got together and spawned Cassie Cage, but apparently experienced a bad breakup. Now while I'm a little curious as to what went down with them, I was never into soap operas and drama. But the whole Scorpion thing requires more detail. Such a long-standing hatred and duel can't just be cast aside like, oh, and that happened. No. The story of Mortal Kombat X seems pieced together and I believe Dev should have known and done better. Harumi. Satoshi. The campaign is also significantly shorter than MK9. It's over before you know it. So this and the lackluster story leads me to believe devs just rushed through the story so they could get into the meat of the matter, single and multiplayer combat. Finish him. The cutscenes in the story and between fights weren't that great either. They don't look awful, just expected more from current gen. Don't know about you guys, but I'm living the dream. The in-game graphics however are pretty good. Now, the voice acting helped push the story as well as the overall experience because although some might argue that voice acting is the least in fighting games, I will forever beg to differ. The voice acting drove a major nail in the coffin of story modes such as the ones we see in games like DOA 5. You die tonight. Still on the story, a little FYI for the viewers. I hate the superhero universe in general. By this I refer to movies, comics and games. I must have outgrown them because other than the retarded names these guys give themselves like Superman and Batman, the stories truly grinds my gears. Sonia, don't make this another thing you regret. What I mean in particular is the way the so-called hero continuously allows the villain to live who in turn goes on to destroy the lives of so many others. Even after everything you've done, I would have saved you. I'm looking at you Batman, total ass clone. That actually is. Funny. So this brings me back to MKX. In MKX we see some of this as well. These heroes repeatedly allow filth like Quan Chi to live no matter what he's done. And I would think that MK being the graphic no holds barred game it is, would have allowed some real fatalities to go down real often. Raiden needs him. Without Quan Chi we can't restore Liu Kang and the other revenants. Well at least Raiden seems to be getting with the program by the game's end. There are fates worse than death. On to gameplay, we're given fighting variations again similar to Mortal Kombat Deception, Armageddon and Deadly Alliance. These are good additions if you're a deeply technical fighter. It gives you the flexibility to become an unpredictable and versatile fighter. Other than that, we have a generally intricate fighting system where learning and mastering your combos, footsies, spacing and blocks are key. Especially since MK's blocking mechanic has never really changed from its archaic style where you press a button instead of pulling back. So this all adds to the need for tacticians over button smashers. <laughs> We don't have silly crap like babalities, animalities and friendships, but we do have our usual over the top fatalities, brutalities and for the rage quitters and quitters in general we have quitalities. Black Dragon wins. 
there's also an online faction mode where you choose a team basically and work towards accruing points for your side. Your points goes towards the overall development of your chosen faction. However, this interests me very little. The Crypt is back, bigger and better. In order to unlock new fatalities, costumes, coins and such, you can take a trip to the Crypt in a new first person view. They've added some bells and whistles to keep this experience fresh, entertaining and relevant. On the flip side, however, if you do not want to go and trek through the perilous crypts, you can go to the online store and buy what you want, including easy fatalities. DLC will forever be a subject of debate. I try to be as objective and unbiased as I can where this is concerned. In the case of MKX, however, I think they're coming really close to crossing the line. There's a reason I despise free-to-play games, that I'll get into another day, but certain things should not be DLC. The character lineup in my opinion isn't that great, and not just because my favorite isn't in there, I speak of Cabal, but it just seems scanty for such a huge game. And I believe the reason for this is because the devs are going to try and squeeze as much money out of the players as possible through character DLC. Now Jason and Predator are fine as DLC, as they're not your standard characters. They have bonus written all over them. But Goro, which was obviously already in the game when you bought it, and others like Tanya, should have just been available. Won't surprise me to see others like Cabal, Cyrax, Borite, Show, and Striker pop up as DLC later on as well. I'm just saying, give us a bigger roster right out of the gate. Then do your whole gold digging DLC crap afterwards. Yeah, give us more before you start gouging our eyes out. So there you have it, a brand new installment in the MK series. Did it live up to the hype? I'm gonna have to say yes, and I'm sure it has a decent lifespan ahead of it with scores of improvements through DLC. Form your own opinions though, if you haven't already. Pick up MKX at Straight Games in the Sovereign Center and decide for yourselves. But the lab gives MKX an 8 out of 10. My work here is done.